Welcome to my house journal. This is uh, a journal to document the different things we are doing around this house to make it a home. We bought this house a year ago almost and have been making a lot of changes. Uh, I like to try to document little bits here and there. Normally on this channel I talk about knitting uh, but to keep it separate and to uh, also talk about something else I really enjoy I am making these little episodes, they are more vlog styled and I always have big plans of making something very aesthetically pleasing and showing you a full room makeover. I love watching those myself, but honestly, that's not how real life is for me. We, in this episode, I want to show you my kitchen and we use the kitchen all the time. We, I don't do a huge makeover and change everything. I'm just doing little projects here and there. So. In this episode, I really want to share where we are right now in the process. So we have changed up a few things in the kitchen. I want to talk about where we started and where we want to go. And yeah, we are maybe in the middle right now. Um, maybe someday in the future, we will do a bigger renovation. But for now, I want to work with what is already here and just change it a little bit and make it feel more like us. Um, some of the changes I want to show you in this episode are the peg rails that we installed up here. I really love those. We also changed our vent hood. Uh, that was a big project and it happens sometimes and I hate myself for that because I really want to document everything but sometimes I forget to put up the camera. So there are some bits missing but I will try to talk you through it and do some voiceover to just show you everything. Uh, and also a lot of the things in here are thrifted and I want to bring you along on one of my trips to a thrift shop that's here where I live in Denmark and just show you where I got everything and tell you about my thoughts behind it. So that is the plan for today's video. I hope you will enjoy. Before we get into the video, I really want to show you my mood board. I use Milanode mainly for mood boards. I also use, use Pinterest. So I, on Pinterest, I just dump all kind of things into folders and then I bring them from Pinterest into Milanote where I can see everything all together a bit better. And I, I have made sections here with all the rooms that I'm working on. Here on the front page, you can see the house as it looked when we saw it the first time. And I saw also some of the drawings of the house. And up here, I have the kitchen. So this was my plan for the kitchen as... We began, um, after we saw it the first time, I started planning. Um, let me just show you to begin with what we started out with. There's the Ikea kitchen with the white, very simple white uh, fronts. Um, there was a dishwasher that didn't work anymore. The kitchen was very simple and functional, but it just missed some more friendly touches. I didn't like the blackout curtains. I didn't like the lamps. It was more cold in some ways. Um. also the vent hood that I was not a big fan of and the grout behind the on the black backsplash here there was this uh, cabinet that I uh, didn't really like so I changed that one out pretty quickly just so we didn't start living with it for too long and uh, yeah the mood board as you can see up here has a lot of the elements that I will show you in the video uh, I have a huge love for peg rails. I think they're just so sweet and add this warm and cottagey uh, element to a kitchen. Um, this one, this picture is probably my main inspiration. It has this dark green cabinets, uh, which I will talk more about as we get into the video. It has um, the peg rail, the white tiles behind, and I think the kitchen table looks very similar to what we have. Ours is a bit more yellow, but we could stain that eventually. Um, 
So yeah, I just gathered up a lot of inspiration, inspiration for the vent hood, the lamps. Um, this is the furniture I ended up getting to replace that other cabinet. It's more open and charming, I think. And for the colors, it's mainly the dark green and then this kind of cream color. And I will get more into the colors as well. But these are the colors that we were thinking about, um, either on the cabinets or on the, um, on the panels behind. Eventually, I also want to change the tap and the sink into a nice brass tap and also a, a porcelain sink. Uh, but for now, the one we have is working fine. thrift shopping and giving new life to old things I think it brings so much character and life into a house so a lot of the things I got for the kitchen I got thrift shopping uh, here I'm visiting a local thrift shop to me they have so many beautiful things um, but I'm always trying to be careful only getting what I really need and what I really like That might be interesting to show what a Danish thrift shop can look like. I know that I really love seeing thrifting from other countries. I got this little frame. I thought it was would be really nice for my daughter's room. Um, so generally I come in with some ideas in mind, some things I'm looking for, but I also just like to see whatever speaks to me. Here I found some little curtains like um, cafe curtains and I got those hello <laughs> I got those uh, for our the big um, cabinets in the kitchen because the cabinets in the kitchen have glass doors and I don't like all the how messy it looks when you can see different products behind the windows so I thought I could hide them a little bit with these curtains on the inside of the glass look for old furniture with either paint or just beautiful wood uh, this little one I almost got but I was thinking I don't know what I would put in it it was just so sweet could be like for on top of a vanity or something like that and then I found this tea cozy which I didn't get because it wasn't that clean but look at how much work went into making this one with the nice fabric and this one too was very pretty so much work um, making all these old things. This table I did get. It uh, just fit perfect to the entrance of the house. It was uh, fairly old but it has some nice compartments and I uh, we use it now for our keys and wallet and stuff like that and it just was perfect so it had to come home with me. It was 300 Danish kroners so that's a fairly good price. So when we first saw the kitchen about a year and a half ago, there were definitely some things we liked about the kitchen, but also some things we really wanted to change. It's an IKEA kitchen, very basic, and that's actually fine because we can do make some changes to it. We don't have to change the whole kitchen. It's very functional, but there are definitely some parts I don't or didn't like very much. Uh, some of them we already changed. Um, one of the first things I did was I painted the grout behind, behind the stove because on the backsplash um, because it was just looking very industrial. They had many elements that were very industrial as such as the vent hood and when I say they I mean the previous owners um, and I just it didn't feel like us. I like to have a little bit more of a cottage vibe, a very cozy country feel kitchen, very mm, 
yeah, cozy and a little bit more traditional, a bit more like in a cottage with the, I really love the peg rails, I love the panels. The panels were already there and uh, was one of the things, the elements I really loved about the kitchen. So we kept the panels on the back, they're also in another place in the kitchen. And uh, they have this beautiful green, but it needs a fresh layer of paint. It's not looking so nice when you view it up close. So I've been thinking a lot about the color choices and uh, what to do about the IKEA cabinets. And I really want to stay within this dark green, very uh, muted and but also very, not warm, but it's very friendly. It's very like nature. Uh, inspired in here and so I wanted to, to keep the dark green but I've actually been playing with the idea of uh, switching the colors around so on this back wall um, I thought of maybe using a more of a grayish uh, beige white <laughs> it's always a hard color to to explain but just like a very light but with a bit of a tint um, to use that and then to take the green onto the cabinets instead now, a lot of people have told me they really love this wall behind me and I love it very much, so I'm not quite sure if I want to do it. But what we plan to do is to use these kind of um, moldings uh, and to add those to the drawers and then I swatch this color that I really like. It's a, very, a little more dark green than the one behind me, but still very similar. And then to have that on the cabinets. The other option would be to keep the green behind us, but just give it a fresh layer of paint, maybe in this a little bit darker green, and then to have the cabinets in the color that I planned for. So I know my colors, I already picked the colors I want, but it's really hard to, to know what will look good until you actually try it out. So I'm thinking if I should go with a, I think it's a call a tuxedo kitchen, where you have the dark on the bottom, the light on the top, or we should keep the screen wall behind us and then try to see if we like a more light color in the whole kitchen. It's very bright right now and, and I like for it to have a little bit more uh, weight and just feel a little more cozy in some way. So what we also want to change is the brush steel on the kitchen cabinets. We want to change it for brass handles. I already have knobs, uh, they will go on top of these so if you can see. <laughs> Let me try a different finger. Here we go. So this is the plan, but uh, I can't change the knobs until we add this. And it will just be a little bit of a bigger, once we get started with uh, adding the trim, it will be a little more of a bigger um, change in the kitchen. So I think we'll do it during the summer when the weather is nice, we can open the windows and just, it's a little more easy to also eat outside and maybe we don't have to cook so much. So I think that will be the plan. And um, for now it works fine, but they are a little bit yellow, have a yellow tint, some of the cabinets. We bought some new ones that we, when we had our uh, dishwasher and our fridge, those are the same um, fronts on the cabinets from Ikea, but they look much brighter. <laughs> so there's a bit of yellowing, yellow stain on the old ones. and. I just really want to change that. Uh, we changed the vent hood um, and I will show you in a clip uh, how we did that. I brought in some furniture, most of it is uh, secondhand or thrifted, but um, I also splurged on a piece that I thought would look really nice in the kitchen and bring a lot of atmosphere. Uh, put up curtains and what more? I got this little round table that is now my favorite spot. I will just get out of the way so you can see this is my absolutely favorite spot in the kitchen. I love to sit here and have a tea or a coffee or while I'm cooking, I can take a little break. Yes, I sit here and knit a lot as well. So I think that's enough for the introduction. The first thing I knew we had to change was the vent hood. It was still working, so I felt a little bit bad about it, but it was just not suiting the kitchen at all. It was very industrial and big and way too big for the kitchen. So I tried my best to get it down alone. That didn't work out. I had to have my partner come in and pull it down with me. Uh, and I forgot to record that, of course. Um, and then I was just getting everything ready to paint the wall behind. It was the only wall I hadn't painted already. We are going for a nice white paint for the walls. And then the colors will be on the cabinets and on the paneling. 
we donated the vent hood so that one hopefully got to a good home. This is the state of my kitchen right now. We removed the vent hood or the range hood. I don't know what is more commonly used. And I've been trying to remove the silicone strip that was sit like just under the vent hood. So you can pretty much see where it was. And it was attached with a silicone strip. Luckily, I am planning to put up a peg rail along this edge here. So it's not really necessary to um, to put new silicone or anything. I just had to even it out. There were some parts like the corners that were pretty bulky, but I just took a hammer and kind of crushed them very carefully. So I didn't, especially here, I had to kind of do some work not to um, not to hit the, the tiles or ruin those. These tiles had black or dark gray grout and I actually painted that recently. Um, so now they look a lot more clean. Uh, the wall is going to be white as it is up here. Um, so I'm just gonna paint it white. Then we're gonna put up another vent hood that's a little bit smaller. And hopefully it's gonna look okay with the peg rail because I'm a little nervous about the distance between here and the um, where the electricity comes out of the wall and we cannot move that. behind the vent hood white is just making such a huge difference it just brightens up the whole room and makes everything look a lot cleaner now i can see how yellow the doors look after we painted white so i guess all the trim and the doors will also have to get a coat of paint but they will have to be washed first and um, sanded so it's a bit of a bigger project so while the paint is drying, I'm going to move on to the peg rail. We already made one on the other side of the wall. This one has a little shelf on top. I think that looks really nice. It's just made out of simple wood um, that you can get in any hard hardware store. Is that what it's called? I think so. Um, and it looks like this when you get it. So it's a uh, pine and then I gave it a nice stain with some linseed wax just to get that nice warm tone. To get started on the peg rail above the backsplash, I measured the wall. And this is when YouTube looks a little bit too easy because it looks like I just cut the piece and it fit and we were all happy. But the reality was that I cut the piece maybe a few millimeters too long. And then I spent a lot of time sanding it because it had to fit in between the door frame and the panels on the other side. Um, in the end, it all worked out, but it took a long time and I was very frustrated. Okay, so I'm ready to get started. I have my piece of wood here and I have my little uh, pegs. I got them in, in a bag uh, where they have some kind of finish, but... You can see here after I give them the wax, they will be a little bit darker. So these will be placed all over the piece of wood. I'm using this linseed oil wax from a Swedish company. Um, and I have the one, I can't remember the name right now. I think this one is called Brown or um, yeah, I can't remember the name. And this one is like a grayish color. So just to take the warm tone of this one down a little bit because once I apply it on the on the fur or the pine it becomes more warm and I want to have it a little cooler so I'm mixing these two I'm mainly giving it this one the dark brown and then I'm adding a bit of this one on top and I have to do it also 
to all the pegs and uh, it's fairly easy you just need to rub it in and then wipe it off afterwards so here i bring out all of my very fancy tools to apply the wax which is an old sock <laughs> I found that it's one of the easiest things to use and I like to apply the wax uh, very a little at the time so spread it out in the beginning and then add more and more to any holes um, just so you don't add too much from the beginning you have to remove it afterwards remove any excess so just take some time buffing it in but um, it's a really nice process and since it's linseed wax you have to dispose of any um, cloth afterwards or put it in a airtight bag um, because it can catch fire so you want to be careful with that but I just like using really natural products like linseed oil and uh, it's just very satisfying to work with um, and I think it has a very beautiful finish. It might not look like it but finding exactly the pegs I wanted for this project was really hard. Uh, I see them a lot in the US but in Denmark this kind of pegs are really hard to come by. I found a lot of smaller ones, but I wanted them to be fairly big and long. First, I ordered some that turned out to be way too small. And then I just kept looking, but it was really hard to Google the using the right words. And I would find things in the UK. So if you're in the UK, I there are a few sellers on Etsy. And in the US, it seems fairly easy. But in Denmark, it was just for some reason, really hard to find the right ones. But it was really worth all the trouble because the pack rail ended up looking exactly as I had envisioned. And getting something like that shipped from another country like the UK or the US just seemed a little bit silly because it's so easy to make. Um, and I think anyone can make them uh, with just a little bit of patience. You don't need to do a lot of cutting or screwing. It's just uh, finding the right materials that can be a bit a hassle but once you have those it's very easy to make for this part i'm missing some vocabulary i'm pretty sure i don't know how to explain but these pegs had a metal part on the inside so you had to uh, add screws to the back and here you can see how we added them from the back you can probably get different styles of pegs uh, this was just the ones i could get there was only one type and i just had to go with that one and again here, I forgot to <laughs> record us putting it up on the wall, but it was fairly simple once we had all the measurements figured out where to place it exactly. And here you can see the finished result. I think it looks so beautiful. Are we just smaller versions of